The Twitchiest community has earned themselves a $1,000 bonus giveaway by reaching all of our goals with Guardian Tales. So go ahead and check out the description down below to go get your entries. The more ways you enter, the better your chances to win the $1,000 and keep your eyes out for opportunities in the future to earn more cash giveaways for the Twitchiest community. Hello everybody and welcome to your Agni. A mid lane guide. So we're going to be starting off with our Agni actually with the sand of time because uh, we do want some pretty early CDR on to Agni. We're going to get two health potions because we started with the sand of time, one mana pot, and then our beats. Uh, our build is going to be focused around kind of cooldown uh, power in pen. Uh, you do actually need CDR on Agni. He thrives with it. A lot of people don't uh, tend to get the CDR on Agni because they think, well, his ultimate has multiple. His ultimate has multiple charges, so you can just kind of wing it. Uh, but you're a lot better off actually getting that CDR because it is going to make those charges on your ultimate go even faster. So very helpful for Agni. Also in Agni, we are going to start with our three. You can start with your flame wave on Agni. I still find the dash to just be the more efficient start. Um, some people do like oh, to start sorry. with uh, the two. So that way you don't even have to worry about uh, the early game, like dashing into the wave and stuff. Uh, but for me in particular, I almost always get that dash first. Now, just because you get the dash first doesn't mean you want to dash into uh, the wave. You don't want to do that. Most of the time you want to dash back towards, you want to dash back towards uh, your own tower to keep yourself safe. If you dash into the enemy archers, uh, you're asking to get yourself first blooded especially with this crazy meta of like junglers are immediately in the mid lane uh, you'll catch yourself out of position real fast so we are going to get that two at level two though uh what we could have done right here is walked over together um and fought them at those mid rps they had already used their abilities uh on the mid left harpy so that actually would have been a really nice fight for us i'm actually gonna dash through this a so i'm gonna hit her with that three she's taking a lot of damage so if chalk just gets a little bit on where she's gonna go down unfortunately we do have a chalk jungle for some reason uh which i definitely don't recommend a real a standard assassin jungle right there uh and that's a that's a free kill onto the wheelix pretty much any assassin right there can grab that kill at level three, we are going to grab our one. This is our stun, which you basically just use at the end of your other Agni abilities in order to get a little stun off on them. Uh, Agni's passive is going to be quite good as we get later on into the game. Uh, we're going to get this bleed damage, and this bleed damage does have scaling. So as our magical power gets higher, the value that we're going to get out of this bleed is going to go up and up and up. And so it's actually going to stay relevant all game long, even into the late stages of the game. Agni is often considered to be the like most okay of mages. Um, it's been a long time since Agni has been uh, a meta mage. For a very long time, Agni has just been a okay mage. Um, not bad, not great, just okay. Uh, maybe good could be a good word to describe him. Um, most of the time when you see a tier list, uh, it'll start off with Agni going into the A tier because he's just kind of been like, yeah, playable, not the best, not the worst for, for the longest time. Only in the very early days of Smite was Agni a uh, extremely competitive mid laner, but he really hasn't been for quite a while, but he's always a pretty safe pick because he does have that long range dash. 
Which then brings us to the most complicated part of Agni, which is when do I use my dash aggressively? Uh, Agni's dash has a significant amount of damage on it. Um, so being able to use it aggressively I will provide you with a lot more damage in your kit. But then you're also using your getaway skill offensively, which is, of course, very dangerous. Uh, so as a general rule, I would recommend simply not using it aggressively. Um, unless you are 100% certain that you are going to be okay to use it aggressively. So a lot like with Thoth on his two, if at any given time you're like, hmm, I don't think this is a good time or I don't know if it is a good time to dash aggressively, then I would go ahead and save it and keep it up for a defensive play. Once you get a little bit better though and a little bit more comfortable with the Agni, you will be able to use that dash more aggressively and more often. Especially if you have like a lot of wards out, you know where everybody is on the map, right? If you have a lot of comms, people are calling out things, chances are you're gonna be in a lot better spot. But if you're like 1v1, but you don't know where anybody is, you don't have any comms, you don't know where the jungle is gonna be, it's probably not a safe time to go for that dash unless that dash is gonna guaranteed secure that kill in which case at least you've made it a one for one at the minimum for the level order on agni that is going to be four a two a three one uh, this is the way you're always going to level Agni. Level up the four first uh, when you can for that big burst damage. Keep in mind that that is not just um, damage increase on one bomb. That's for all three bombs. Then you level up the two because this is going to give you damage and cooldown. Then your three for the damage. And finally, your four. Your four you're really only utilizing uh, for that stun effect. Get riggedy, wreck, son. So how you're gonna utilize your one, the most common way is you're going to two, and then you're gonna one right at the very end. So there's a very small moment at the end of your two where it will proc that one, even if you do uh, cast it first. The other most common way that you're gonna proc that one is by using your ultimate and then following up with your one just like we did there in Apollo. And finally, the least most common way that you'll use it, um, the most defensive of all the ways, is to use your dash, and that dash leaves by the flame wave, and then anywhere you put your one on that flame wave, it will go ahead and pop your stun. So the most common though, just bring your little 2-1 and ulti-1 combos. Another thing, a little fun tidbit about Agni, his ultimate doesn't actually take any mana. Um, just kind of a little fun fact there for you. So you can be very low on mana on Agni and still participate um, in the fight that is going on because your ultimate doesn't actually take mana, which is nice because it has three charges. Uh, so if it did take mana, it would probably take a lot of mana very, very quickly. So it is a good thing that it, in fact, does not. Got to be a little bit careful here that I'm not going to get, like, Athena taunted right into a Janusaur, which kind of looks like the plan that they were wanting to go for there. So I'm just going to dash myself off into that left-hand side jungle and get right on out. Another thing is that using Agni Ultimate to clear wave is absolutely uh, a viable strategy. Uh, most gods, if you were to be using your ultimate to clear away, people would laugh at you. But because Agni's ultimate is over here, you can see these little, um, I don't even know what they're supposed to be, leaves or something? They're probably supposed to actually be meteors, but they kind of look like leaves. Uh, those are going to represent your ultimate. And you can see after I use one, it goes back onto that 15 second cooldown. 
So 15 seconds is basically the length of a cooldown of a regular ability, which is why you can use the Agni ultimate to clear the wave uh, from a safer distance, especially when there's something like an Awelix trying to zone us out or something. There's nothing wrong with just throwing down the ultimate, getting credit for the wave and keeping yourself safe. So we're gonna back up here. We're gonna get ourselves a Spear of the Magus. We've got 20% CDR right now with our cooldown boots and our Sands of Time. And we're gonna get ourselves a Spear of the Magus. I think Agni is actually one of the best Spear of the Magus procers in the game. So what that's gonna do is we're gonna get after we damage a god with an ability, we are going to get an additional 7.5% damage. And the reason why it's so good on Agni is because Agni has so many abilities that he can follow up with. So if we hit somebody with a little ulti one but then we've also got the next all and the next all and the next two and the next three and by that time our ult is back up uh we're getting a whole lot of value out of that item which is also why our third item is going to be soul gem gonna dash right through on this wheelie she jumped over trying to get to that purple buff and that's gonna be the last mistake that she ever makes so our third item is gonna be soul gem soul gem procs of course off of ability uses well agni uses abilities very very fast plus we have the cdr in our kit so the combination of those two things is going to mean that we're going to get a lot of soul gem procs now the next item that you might think with that style of build um, that comes to mind for a lot of people is soul reaver i personally do not think that soul reaver uh, is in a great spot uh, so I would stick away from the Soul Reaver in terms of kind of like those procking on ability um, style abilities. Um, keep it to the Soul Gem mostly uh, in the Spear of the Maga. Soul Gem did slightly get nerfed recently, um, but we're going to put emphasis on the word slightly. Very small nerf. Uh, still an extremely good item that you're going to see in most mage builds. So for Agni, before you go into the team fight, you do want to have your passive stacked. Wow, ouch. If at all possible, uh, your passive is gonna provide quite a good amount of damage. So always try to have that stacked up and ready when you're going to go into a team fight. Obviously it's not the end of the world if you do not have it stacked up but if you can have it i mean right now that's already an additional 27 damage per tick that tick is going to be every 0.5 seconds for three seconds i mean that is a significant amount of damage so that is not something that you should scoff at so do try to keep it up because then when you start off with your combo with the two one or the ulti one it's gonna bring a lot of extra burst damage right at the very start for your combo So right now I need to be careful. I don't know where this Awelix is gonna be. I really do need to back up probably and just get some more wards out. So I'm gonna go back, get my tier two going into the soul gem, make sure I get a sentry ward. I'm gonna get rid of this mana pot, grab an Aegis as well. So that way I can get two more defensive wards out in around my body. Help me stay alive. Staying alive, staying alive. For our matchups on Agni, there's really only one thing that we hate above all else, and that is going to be the production of walls. Uh, so like a Ymir tends to kind of destroy us um, with this lower cooldown build. We actually become pretty slippery pretty fast. Uh, so the one thing that starts to get in our way is people that can make a lot of walls. A Ymir, Lord forbid, a Kabrakan will provide a lot of sadness in your Agni games. So try not to pick him into those types of characters. 
Uh, cripples can also be pretty annoying for the same kind of reason. Not being able to use your dash obviously makes Agni very susceptible. And Agni's ultimate does not, does not make him CC immune. So you only have beads as a way to get out of cripples. So you have to keep that in mind when you're playing Agni as well. The one thing that Agni thrives at is a long range poke. He is a long range poker because of that ultimate. Um, there's not a ton of people in the game that can sufficiently outrange the Agni. Um, yeah, and it's obviously like with this ultimate can start to put in some pretty decent work. But in general, that kind of a spam on the ultimate gets to be, be careful, tragically no. annoying for the enemy mid laner to deal with. Now, sustain against you can kind of nullify some of your pokes or something like an Aphrodite or a Hell, but Agni is also an extremely efficient applier of Divine Ruin. This game, it doesn't look like I'm going to uh, need a Divine Ruin. Uh, because they don't really have any sustain. So that is not something that I'm probably going to have to do. But if I did need to get a Divine Ruin, uh, because you've got the three bombs on the ultimate, it means that you've got many chances, lots of AoEs to apply that Divine Ruin uh, very swiftly. I'm gonna walk right into this Wheelix. I'm not super afraid of him right now. I'm gonna see if I can't get my Ymir to come from that top side as well. And we actually might be able to go put down this Wheelix. So we're gonna have some huge damage, damage combos on him. I'm gonna try to get around the back and it looks like he is actually gonna bleed out right there to that Medusa, which is fantastic. Now, beads are down on Yannis. I'm gonna go for a little 2-1 stun combo right here on him. Gonna have to dash back around through this Apollo. That's gonna provide a lot of damage on him as well. Got a little bit of sustain coming out from my Magus. I'm still gonna be looking for some poke in the back line. Nike's over in the right lane. Apollo ultimate is hopefully not up and he won't be greedy enough to go for this. Now we can just back up and get ourselves a little red buff. Dash through the red buff. Use my one to stun it so it doesn't kill me and now I need to get myself out of here and go finish up that soul gem and grab another sentry ward. The price of chaos paid in full. Now we're gonna be a little bit late into our percent penetration here on Agni, but that is okay. We're gonna get a lot more value out of Your this flat damage. Is under attack. And CDR that our build is currently providing. And then of course we will get ourselves into that Karen's coin for that 20% pen. The extra movement speed is, you know, kind of nice for Agni. Uh, he doesn't really need it. You really just grab him the Karen's coin because it is still, even after the small power nerf, the best item uh, for percent penetration for mages. Uh, Obshard has never really made that much sense on Agni uh, because his ultimate is spread out into so many smaller bits you don't get nearly as much benefit from say uh like like a poseidon or something that could maybe uh be worth it with that bonus penetration from the ob shard but agni has never been that way so walls are going to be our friends on agni as far as um non-player made walls so these actual walls are our friends uh, we want to utilize them, keep them between us and the enemy. A player-made wall is a disaster for us. But the actual walls aren't so bad, because uh, we can throw pretty much all of our abilities over and or through walls. Uh, our one ulti can be thrown right over a wall. Uh, our two will actually go through walls, which is extremely convenient. The only thing that won't directly go way. through the wall is going to be our dash, uh, but you can use that dash uh, to kind of hug the wall a little bit and try to get yourself a little bit around it. Just kind of hug the wall. Become friends with the wall. Be the wall. So at this stage of the game, 18 minutes, we are pushing ourselves 
uh, into what I would consider the smite late game right now. Your team has just uh, that 15 to 20 minute marker is really where the late game is happening. Most games are ending around that 25 minute marker, sometimes a little bit earlier. Now we know that Janus does not have beads or Aegis up. So Janus should be our primary target, but I obviously as a mage have to be standing farther back to make sure that I'm not out of position. But I would love to be able to just look for some poke. So get some nice poke here onto Athena. That's fine. Get some more poke onto the Wheelix. It's not going to be as nice as getting it onto the Anus, but this is okay. Going to go ahead and do two auto attacks right there. Just build up my passive. I hear that the Yanis has gone through to mid. I know that he doesn't have his bead. I know he doesn't have his Aegis. I have that bleed from my passive that we stacked up on those mid harpies. And that is going to be enough to go ahead and put that kill away. I don't want to invest too much into the Apollo. I see a Wheelix is in the back looking right at me. So I'm not going to let him get me for free. He still might turn around and go for me. So I'm just going to play safe until my teammates are a little bit closer. Looks like I'm going to make a Nike friend as well. So I'm just going to keep on back, back, backing up. Playing it as far back as I can while still, you know, being in range of the action. So we might be able to pick up that Athena right there who went way too far forward by herself. I'm going to call for the attack Gold Fury. We've got some of them low. We're fairly healthy. We've got a Guan Yu for the sustain. And of course, while I'm low on mana, my ultimate doesn't cost any mana. So I don't have to worry about that at all. Unfortunately, the gold theory is on me, so I gotta be careful. For your objective secure on Agni, your objective secure is what I would call decent. Uh, you're simply just gonna use your ultimate. The second you pop your ultimate, also pop your two. And your ultimate in two will hit at just about the same time, allowing you to have a decent amount of secure. You can basically add your two and your ulti together and know just about how much damage you're gonna be able to secure with. Obviously not as efficient as something like a Scylla ult crush or a E set spirit ball ultimate or something like that, but a lot better uh, than like a Morgana or something uh, who does not have very much objective secure at all. So I do think we need to get some wards over by fire. We don't have any vision on them. So I would like to get that. Actually, they were over by the left lane. That's actually not the worst case scenario for us. Uh, they very well could have done a counter fire tank call. Starting at the 15 minute marker. The 15 minute marker. If you do not have the fire giant warded, you need to get it warded. It is liable to be done. As people are learning more and more about season eight, fire giants are getting done earlier and earlier and earlier. And especially if the team has a big fire giant burner or a sustain giver, whether they have a raw or a Merlin, something of that sort. It is not uncommon right now to see fire giants done in as soon as like 13, 14 minutes. That's happening every couple of rain games. Now they have got somebody split pushing left lane like crazy. So I've got to back up and go defend left lane to make sure that they don't just get a free Phoenix right here because they've got a split pushing Apollo. Brandy and our build, we're going to be getting ourselves into the Rod of Tahuti. Going to bring us up to that 30% penetration point, and when we rank up our starter item, we will have all 40% CDR, plus all the bonus damage that we are going to be getting from the Spear of the Magus, as well as the Soul Gem, as well as the Life Steal that we get from that as well. Uh, not to be undermined, a Soul Gem plus Magus combo? is a decent bit of life still. Magus is going to give us 12%. Soul Gem gives us 12%. Plus the additional healing that we get um, from the uh, actual Soul Gem procs themselves. Another little piece of information for Agni. You don't have to actually aggro camps in order to build up the agony passive you can attack them from outside uh, of their range and actually build up that agony passive
Got a bunch of damage coming our way right onto here, onto the Athena and that Nike. So I'm just gonna dash through to get as much damage out as humanly possible. They are gonna start coming up behind us. I'm gonna turn back around onto the Nike because I don't think I'm gonna be able to actually reach the Athena. Oh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and dash away from this Apollo. I'm gonna start auto attacking on these creeps. Heal up a little bit over here. Just try to sustain myself up. And then I'm gonna try to move myself back in towards my Ymir. Looks like the Apollo uh, should not have his movement ability up right now. So I do actually wanna go target him if at all possible, but I cannot see him through this wall. He sure sees me though. So I'm gonna go for a little dash combo on him. Looks like we are gonna be able to grab the Apollo, but the Athena was there to help clean it up at the end. That's all right. We got level 20. So now we can get ourselves the Pendulum of the Ages. Have that full 40%. CDR for maximum bomb spamming. All right, in the late stages of the game, we're going to be playing probably the runaway from Nike and Athena game uh, most of the time. Uh, luckily, once we get this right up to hoodie finish, we will have tons of percent penetration, though. Um, in between all of our CDR, they are not going to be able to live through our combo very long, especially if they get stacked up, uh, because Agni does have quite nice AoE abilities. If you can get them stunned with each other as well, then they basically have to sit through your entire combo. So I'm going to try to get myself over towards this red buff, get myself a little bit of extra damage before heading over to the fire giant. Would be nice if we had a ward on the gold fury just so we could see if somebody was over there. Um, they have an Apollo, so an Apollo like walking over and just doing the gold fury uh, while everybody's sitting around fire giant it is not an unrealistic play to expect from them. So I am going to start heading over though towards that fire giant. They've got a whole lot of people over here. I'm going to throw down more of a uh, defensive ward here. I thought they might have something there. That way we can be a little bit more careful about our positioning. Oh, Wheelix is actually coming around on this side. She's going to put down the ward there too. And he's going to be slightly out of position. Maybe a little bomb combo. Going to be able to finish that. I've got to go ahead and dash away this way. If I was Apollo, I would come right behind me. He is going to. I've got a Janus on me. I've got an Apollo on me. Uh, not gonna be able to live through that one. Unfortunately, looks like uh, the whole team ended up diving onto the uh, tanks over in solo lane uh, instead of going for those squishies that were over by us. Uh, bad positioning right there from the rest of the team on the target priority focus. Uh, no reason to be chasing down a full tank Athena uh, when we knew where the Awelix was. Uh, we could have just been countering her as she went for our wards, and then after that, moving ourselves into the fire giant. Do not, especially at this late stage of the game, don't get distracted by those frontline characters, especially if they're not gonna provide a lot of damage. If it's like a King Arthur or a Cucullin, they're gonna be providing so much damage that you kind of have to focus them anyway, even though they're gonna be tanky. Uh, but something like an Athena, you do Lord, not have to focus giant. unless it's the absolute only thing in your range and you're not gonna be helping the team otherwise. And that, and that scenario would have been way better for them to be walking over towards their main damage dealer. build up our passive as we head back over we know that they have a ward right on top of us right here because the awilix had just counted it earlier they actually have two wards out here so we're going to get a little two for one deal now we do need to get Only our left. medusa over here uh as well we are still short a oh, man i've got my beads up on my way. but no agus and we keep having to give up these wards. We need our uh, front line to be more uh, positionally aware right now. Because we keep giving up all of our, all of our sentry wards that we're putting down, which we really don't need to, especially with like a Ymir and a Chog. Like we can be positioning more aggressively with them. And cutting people off as they're trying to come in. So like right now, I don't want to put everything that I have into this Athena 
I'm trying to wait for some squishier targets to come back around. Now, the Nike and the Athena group up right here. I see a Wheelix off to the side. Should be able to hopefully grab this kill. He actually blinked in on me over all of my stuff. Apollo at this point is just split pushing and is definitely going to get uh, that Phoenix no matter what. So there's not too much that we can do about that. Hopefully he doesn't continue to split push and like go for uh, our Titan. I imagine he's going to try to ulti himself into this fight. Unfortunate that Nike still had her blink up as well. And we just can't quite win these fights hard enough right now. Uh, so that Apollo over there split pushing and left is going to bring down that duo lane side. Um, Phoenix, there's no way that we can do the fire giant without our Medusa. Unfortunately, we are going to need her to be alive in order to actually uh, complete it. So now we just have to make sure that we have left lane pushed out. This is where the game gets really hard. It's about to be the enhanced fire giant. They've got a ton of globals with the Janus, the Apollo, and the Athena. We have to get left pushed up, which means that now we are missing a significant presence over by the fire giant. Um, and unfortunately, everybody ran over to the duo lane. Uh, with us, we really only needed one person to go over to the duo lane to get that pushed out towards the tier one tower. Everybody else should have still been positioning themselves around the fire to make sure that we don't give away a free enhanced fire giant. Positioning this game has been a large issue. Gonna throw down a defensive sentry. They are on the fire giant and they are unfortunately gonna get it for free. Um, that is the enhanced. I say we have to go for the fight right here, right now. Um, we have to try to get them while they've got some of their abilities down uh, because the enhanced fire giant is simply so strong of a buff that if we can't kind of get them with it right now, we're probably just not going to be able to make it happen. Luckily, we do get the Awelix. If he can grab the Apollo as well, that would be a big pickup. Going to look for the Janus over the wall instead of for the Nike. He's going to be just a little bit too fast to get through that. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to pick up anybody else. In fact, I am a little bit worried at this point of the Apollo kind of ulting back in on us. Uh, so we just need to retreat now and go for that defense in the left lane. So that entire segment basically didn't need to happen. Uh, there was no reason for us to have so many people over in the left lane, particularly our tanks. Uh, they could have still been set up over near the fire giant giving us vision, uh, making the enemy second guess their decision to go do it. And then we would have been able to make it over uh, with plenty of time to spare back over towards the fire giant. Now they've got a couple of people over and right. We can maybe look for a quick pick if they come out for our buffs or something. Um, but this is a very hard position to be in now. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can't grab my red buff. We do see most of them over in the right hand side i'm going to grab a red pot just to get that potion of power for a little bit extra magic damage might be enough to help us grab a quick kill or something now we got the guan yu pushing out left that's good we need to have that left push out as much as possible uh he just has to be careful for the potential rotation, which they can do extremely fast because of their giant global comp. So at this point for Phoenix defense, we got to make sure we get those defensive sentries out, which we do. I am mostly going to be standing off to the sides and looking for poke uh, into the lane as they try to run through. Watching out, of course, for those Nike jumps and Athena taunts that are sure to be coming my way. Now, Apollo is going to try to run through here. I'm going to go for a quick burst combo on him, and I am going to be able to pick him off. And now we should be going for a fight immediately. We should actually go into the left lane because we're going to need to get this push out anyway. I'm going to save my dash just in case the Athena tries to dash away. Now, this is a huge pickoff opportunity because we get that Apollo kind of being greedy on the pathing. Now we're going to be able to get a giant pick. We still need to shove out left lane. And now we're going to be the team shoving out left. Attack left lane. So they lost Fire Giant on all but two people. And now we shove out left lane. 
They don't really have the split push potential without their Apollo up. And now we're going to be the ones that are getting to shove. Shout out to Red Pot for giving us just enough damage to uh, go ahead and grab that pick as well. Now they're going to give up all the way to the tier two for free. They will be respawned for the Phoenix. Um, but the Wheelix actually won't be up for another 20 seconds. So I say we actually go for this, take this power play um, while we have it. Apollo once again gonna move up pretty close. So is the Yannis. They're gonna get slapped by that pretty hard. If we can get over to this Yannis and put him down or the Apollo, we're not gonna be able to get either. I'm gonna call for the retreat. Now they've got a lot of global potential for getting back into this fight. So we got to assume that there's an Apollo ult, a Yannis ult, all sorts of ults coming our way. We need to be backing up. We're getting way too greedy right now. Going for this retreat. Nike. The Yannis ult is luckily down. We have made a good exchange by getting that phoenix but they have such global pressure that we cannot get greedy we need to run manually all the way back there's no stopping on this running they've got the threshold from yanis all that good stuff so we need to continue to run back we can't afford to get greedy on this you can literally hear them running it all the way back down okay Rank up our actives. Grab ourselves a sentry ward. Now the question is, is are they going to go for their own little left phoenix? It doesn't look like they're going to. Uh, we do need to get set up around the fire giant once again. Looks like they're going to be going straight for it as soon as it spawns. So we do need to get ourselves over there. Uh, this Apollo might once again go for that cheeky split push. Now they could already be on this thing. We've got Onis out in all the other lanes. Unfortunately, they are once again going to get that fire giant for free. We're just not getting to this fire giant fast enough, which is really costing us. That is the second enhanced fire giant that we have now given up for free. Uh, which is not, not a good situation to be in. Not a good, you don't, don't want to give those up for free. Luckily our last Phoenix offense at least went uh, quite well. So now we just chill out and wait for the next one. Nothing else to do besides wait. We got a passive built up. Got the full build. If the game continues to go, we do have the speed pot. Just in case we need to break ourselves into a sixth item. Uh, but that would be crazy if the game went long enough to get a sixth item. That basically never happened. This is already an extremely abnormally long game and i think it's because the enemy team has been winning pretty much the whole time but we've got more kills so they haven't really been able to push for an end red pot's gonna run out and i don't have my red buff either so i am gonna be missing a pretty nice amount of damage i wish i had both of those things for this defense but i cannot move up to grab them so it just kind of is what it is and I doubt the Apollo is going to make the mistake of running across the uh, jungle segment like he did last time. They're getting prepped to shove for this as much as they can. The Apollo is going to stay far off onto the side. Nike is just kind of coming around. Now, he doesn't have the gate. So, he's going to take a lot of poke right there. Easy poke for me. I'll take anything that I can get on these guys before they do their full dive. Now, it looks like Yanis is kind of looking right through this corner as well. So, I'm going to pop a little ulti over the wall. Not going to be able to land on him. That's a bummer. Once again, the Nike is coming through. 
Athena's also coming through on me. That's no big deal as well. Oh, the Yenna's ulti is going to try to come through, but it's not going to connect, so we're going to get a lot of damage out onto him. I need to continue to push out this mid a little bit. Looks like a Wheelix is going to try to die for me in the mid lane. I'm going to throw down a couple of ulties onto him. They're really putting a lot of pressure onto me. Luckily, I've got my Aegis still up, so I should be able to live through the Wheelix by Aegising that feather stuff. Grab myself a potion of power. They haven't gotten a Phoenix yet. This isn't bad. We've still got all five of us up. Apollo's ulting into this fight. I'm going to go immediately for the Apollo. Now I'm going to call for the attack. I'm actually going to dash in aggressively on that. Kill the Athena. I'm going for the Yannis. I do need to be a little bit careful. I think he's going to try to portal on the wall. So I'm going to go for a body block position on him. We're going to be able to grab that kill. Now we should shove it right on down this mid lane. Going to see if that can force the Nike to jump. Now that her jump is down, I can actually go for the stun combo if we can kill this nike there's actually a good chance we can end the game fantastic sunder from our ymir it's taking a very long time actually for us to get to this nike and it looks like our medusa had died so unfortunately we're actually not going to be able to get very much off of this at all uh maybe we can grab ourselves one or two phoenixes but not being able to kill that Nike is a big bummer for sure. Now the Wheelix is looking a little crazy over to the side right now. We're gonna be able to put him down for sure. Grab ourselves a Phoenix and then we probably just need to retreat. They've got too many global ults once again. We keep getting caught out because of all of their globals and so it would be really nice this time if we could go ahead and uh not get caught out by the inevitable apollo and yan assaults that always end up coming our way so here at the end i am going to actually grab myself the staff of mirden staff of mirden still going to keep our cdr uh, up as well as our penetration now the staff of mirden on agni is a little bit funky uh, because of the way that you utilize your bombs um, if you're gonna go the mirden just make sure that you're not spamming your bombs for like wave clear or something but it can give you that double dash over in the uh, over in your team fight and once again they are gonna get a third fire giant for absolutely free because we have no vision on it we have no presence on it we have absolutely nothing on it sometimes you just do not learn your lesson <laughs> sometimes you got to be hit in the head with it over and over and over again before you learn your lesson and you start to buy some wards eventually they will figure it out i probably they'll get there uh, at this point, I'm kind of bored. So I just kind of want this game to be over. So I'm going to go for some big play, see if I can get a pick or something. Sight from afar. I should probably be farther back by the Phoenix, but uh, kind of just want this game to be done with. Enemy missing left. <laughs> so I'm kind of just looking for a pick or something. Maybe we can gank the Apollo on left lane. He was pushed up pretty far. Maybe he'll still be over there. No, nope, doesn't look like he's going to be there. All right. Back to the Phoenix for the next Phoenix defense. Yonder we wander. Now we got to wait for them to come push us again. I've got my beads down for 70. Might as well go buy another sentry ward to use of the Phoenix. <laughs> Alchemy at its finest. Apollo is way over on the right hand side. He's just going to be pushing up those minions. That's a half HP Nike. Just from our Agni poke. <laughs> Yeah. 
speaking of Agni Pope, that's going to be enough to go ahead and put down the Wheelix. I'm going to call for the attack. Apollo is going to be... Oh, God. Apollo is going to be a split pushing over in right. So somebody needs to get over and defend that right Phoenix. He's just going to split push it and get a Phoenix because we're split pushing right now. Try to get back over and help out our team. I'm going to go look for the Apollo. Hit him with a little bomb combo. That should be enough to put him down. Now I'm just going to just start spamming my absolute brains out. I do have a double dash. I can dash once, dash twice, get myself over to the Nike. Don't care a ton about killing the Athena. I care a lot more about killing the Nike. There we go. Going to be able to stun him. Maybe we can use our dash here for a little body block action. And if he can actually get that off, we might just be able to put this game away. We've got 20 seconds on the Wheelix. And that's the only person that is actually up right now. I'm going to be careful on my bomb usage because I can go ahead and go for the double dash or the double two with my staff of Mirrodin. And so this is where we spam our brains out. Spam, spam, spam. Spam everything. Are we literally going to come on through? I'm going to dash through him. I'm going to dash back through him again. Give him a little double dash Tony Hawk style action. And we are going to be able to finally put this game away. Long story short, Agni can do a lot of damage. He can do it from a long way away. So give yourself a build that has stuff like Soul Gem and Magus in it to give yourself a little bit of sustain. Make you a little bit harder to kill because you're going to be doing plenty of damage. And make sure that your team is buying wards and positioning themselves around the objectives because otherwise games can be so much harder and go 40 minutes long forcing you to do 63,000 damage when all you had to do was basically buy a sentry ward and that is our Agni mid lane guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.